From BLC Studios in Mankato, Minnesota, this is the Maverick Hockey Live Podcast, presented by Duncan, with your host, Shane Frederick. This is the Maverick Hockey Live Podcast, presented by Duncan. I'm your host, Shane Frederick, and joining me today are a couple of repeat guests, but uh, two that... uh, Accomplished some big things last weekend, so welcome Jack McNeely and Reggie Lutz, Minnesota State Super Seniors. How you guys doing? I'm doing good. good. How about you? <laughs> doing, <laughs> doing great. Doing good as well. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, having you guys on because of uh, what you guys accomplished on Saturday night, which um, Minnesota State won its fifth consecutive McNaughton Cup championship as a uh, regular season conference championship champions. First uh, championship of this new CCHA after winning the last four in the WCHA. And Reggie and Jack have been part of all five championships. Uh, you guys uh, saw a pretty cool photo of you guys with the cup and holding up uh, number five. And that was with your hand. That was pretty cool. So uh, what what does that mean to you guys? Uh, whoever wants to go first, I'll start with Jack. What, is it, what does that mean to you to, to be part of that set? That's something that's never been done by a team, and which means it's never been done by a player, especially with not a lot of fifth-year guys. Yeah, I mean, I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't pretty special. I mean, Reggie's been my roommate the last five years, so it's cool we had to do it together. Um, it's something uh, we have to enjoy. I'm glad we got to do it senior night for, for all of us seniors, and um, probably some I'm going to th- look back at more uh, once the season's over. It just kind of focused right on uh, Michigan Tech and then going into playoffs here. So, yeah, How about you, Reggie? Yeah, it was really special. Like Jack, so it was on senior night, so all of a, I think all of our parents were there, especially Julian. His parents came over from Europe, so... Uh, I know it was really special for him, but for me and Jack, it's yeah, uh, such a cool experience to do it for five years straight, and especially that trophy with how much history is behind it. I think uh, Lucia said it was like the second oldest hockey trophy there is, so uh, that was uh, something really special, and um, you kind of get chills every time you win it, so it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it didn't get old? It didn't feel old that you won it a fifth time? It was it was just a special? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, uh, some people might kind of get used to it, but I think every time you can win a championship, it's something really special no matter what it is so it was awesome and, and you you guys both mentioned it being senior night and you know I recall last year you won it at home but it was uh in front of a very small you know COVID crowd right and then I believe year before that was that at Bemidji yep and uh how about the previous two years where, where did you guys uh, clinch it I think Fairbanks our sophomore year home home our freshman year against Bemidji too was that after a tie, though, or something, or a, a, not a win or something? You clinched it. It was kind of a weird. I just felt <laughs> I like can't last. Remember that. It was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So long ago for you oldsters who have been around forever. Exactly. But, yeah, you're right. You won it at Fairbanks. Um, so to do it at home, 5,000 people, uh, that had to be a pretty uh, cool experience, especially the last couple of years, not being able to do it at home. It's just a different experience, right? Yeah, that's definitely something I thought about um, after the game Saturday, too, like, uh, up in the offices um, at the rink there you see all the pictures so you'll go through go through every once in a while and look at them and um, um, yeah so sophomore year we're in Alaska and then um, Bemidji my junior year and then last year not having any fans at home wasn't really the same so awesome having a sold out crowd Saturday and obviously we're really, really appreciative of all the support we get so it's cool we got to do it in front of obviously our friends and family and then the fans so you know what, what does that represent to to win a a cup like that. I mean, it, it's the culmination of a season's worth of of games. It's a regular season championship. It's a grind of a season. I know um, Coach Hastings in his post game press conference, you know, made sure to mention Nathan Smith, who at the time was still in China. You know, just to kind of remind everybody that this wasn't just one tonight. This was one over the span of a season, and everything that goes into that. What what is that grind of a season like to to win a championship? Yeah, I think it. Uh, like you said, Coach kind of touched on it. It's, uh, it kind of takes a whole year. It takes everybody in the locker room. It's not just one night that you go out there and you're playing for a championship. But, it, I mean, throughout the the whole season, it's kind of a grind. So you need everybody, uh, different people step up different nights, and it all kind of adds up to, to winning this uh, championship. So you got to play, I mean, a little less than 30 games to win the trophy. So it, uh, it takes a lot of effort from everybody. So it's, like he said, it's, uh, it doesn't just happen one night. It, it happens throughout the entire season. Yeah. Jack? Yeah, 
I think you look back on some of the adversity that you go through after the season, um, throughout the season. Like you look at Lake State when we had a bunch of guys sick and we had some different guys come in the lineup and step up. And, um, yeah, you go through tough losses like Ferris State. We lose on Friday, but we find a way to bounce back and win Saturday. I think that that just helps you grow as a team. And, um, yeah, the trophy is obviously awesome. And it's just an, an accumulation of just everybody's hard work. So. So that trophy, it's 109 years old. I think they said 108, but I think now that we're in 2022, I don't know when the exact birthday of it is, but it's 40 plus pounds. It's uh, solid silver. When you look at it, the etching in it is very cool. There's a lot of pine cones and pine needles and uh, mentions of uh, the old, uh, old amateur hockey association from Houghton, Michigan that goes back. Um, you know, now that you guys have been part of it for five of them, have you had a chance to like kind of explore the cup and kind of realize its history a little bit? I mean, is there something, you know, Reggie kind of mentioned that, you know, the age of it, but is there something about it that, I mean, it's, that, that's really special to you guys? Yeah. I think the one thing when you pick it up, it's pretty heavy. That's the first thing I noticed in my freshman year, but it doesn't get any lighter, but um, no, I, I think it's cool. Like we've looked at the, on the bottom has the teams and the names that have, have won. So you kind of look at that, but yeah, it's obviously an awesome trophy and it's, uh, it's very heavy. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of detailed work that goes on that trophy. Like you said, there's like pine needles, pine cones and uh, the etching of the two hockey players that's on the front of the trophy. Um, even the handles on the side, it's, it's uh, really a beautiful trophy. And yeah, like Nail said, or Jack said, it's just kind of that you look around and see the teams that have won in the past and, you know, there's some really special teams on there, so it's something really cool. Yeah, I think it was interesting last year when you, you guys were seniors, um, fourth-year seniors, um, you know, that was the first class to who gone all the way through and, and win four. Uh, now you guys are part of a fifth. The, the fourth-year seniors now are part of another group of uh, the class that's won four in a row. Um, does it make, you know, I don't know, was there a moment this season where it really felt like you guys were – glad you made your decision to come back for a fifth year uh just to remind anyone listening the uh ncaa granted players uh uh, of all sports an opportunity to uh, get another year back because of covid and uh reggie and jack uh as we talked about earlier this year were were two of those players uh, who came back to minnesota state uh take advantage of that extra extra year and we'll go into a couple other details about that in a second but you know that you know, to to win a championship, does that just kind of make that decision feel all that much better? Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially this group of guys we're able to do with this something really special. I mean, uh, we're like you said, we've been here for five years, so every time you know there's a different group every year, and I think you get to build relationships with uh, a lot of the new guys and new ones on the team, and they grow throughout those five years. So it's to do with this group is really special and. You know, I mean, you'll remember all five of these championships for the, the rest of our life. So it's, I mean, I'm really happy I came back for my fifth year. Yeah, same here. I think right away going into the summer, um, kind of knew it was a special group and something you want to be a part of right away. So, um, yeah, obviously it's one of the um, things that we want to look to accomplish this year. But at the same time, um, there's a lot of hockey left, hopefully, for our right. group. And we have a lot less left to accomplish still. So one of the things about coming back for for an extra year is the number of games played and, and uh, different records uh, that uh, in different places you guys will end up on 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 lists. But uh, Reggie, on Friday night, you became the all-time um, MSU uh, player in terms of games played. Uh, that was your 164th game, uh, surpassing Bryce Gervais, who uh, had the record at 163. Then you went to 165 on Saturday, and Jack moved up into second place uh, with 164, I think, on on. Uh, Saturday, right? So you guys are one, two now. So, Reggie, you guys, you guys stay healthy, right? Going forward. <laughs> I've been joking around that Jack's either going to sneak into my room at night and beat me up in my sleep, or run me in practice so I can miss a miss a game so he's even with me or surpass me. But um, no, I just kidding. It's been, uh, you know, it was really special. I didn't actually know I beat the record or had the record until after the game when they announced it. So that was kind of surprising to me, but it's something really special, and it was a, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun to see kind of my teammates congratulate me after that and it was a it was a special night yeah he probably would have been a little bit further ahead of you right but uh he missed a few games this year <laughs> yeah no I'd, I'd rather have reggie on the ice so i wouldn't do that that's, that's a little bit more important to me so <laughs> but 160 you know four 165 games and, and and counting i mean that's a that's a lot of college hockey games i mean that's um you know even if you do it in four years i mean what you know, what's it like to think that you've had that, that body of work over five years? 
Yeah, it's kind of uh, crazy to think about it when you put it, when you say the number. <clears throat> I didn't really realize it was that much, but, um, you know, I was kind of looking back to freshman year to where we are now. It's, it's kind of crazy to see how far personally I've come as a hockey player and kind of as a person. So, um, you know, it's been really cool just to look back and kind of think about the past four years and kind of see where I've developed as a player and as a person. So it's been really cool. Um, yeah, Jack. Um, yeah, I agree with what Reggie said. Uh, I mean, you think about your your first ever college game. It kind of feels like yesterday. How fast it goes by, and you know, coach always uh, tells the group that like you gotta. Um, doesn't matter if you're a freshman or a senior. It's gonna go by fast. So you gotta enjoy it and take advantage of your opportunities. And yeah, we've obviously um, got a lot of uh, games played at the college level here, and um, this is an unbelievable place to play. So we're pretty lucky to call this home the last five years. What do you remember about your first college game? Yeah, we were joking about it in the training room uh, last week. Uh, I remember my first shift. We were playing St. Cloud at home, and I wheeled the net, and I just gave a normal breakout pass to Max Coda, and he, the defenseman stepped up and absolutely smoked him. <laughs> so I felt really bad about that. I was like, it's kind of an eye-opening moment. Like, wow, this is college hockey. Like, I hope it wasn't a, uh, too bad of a pass, but that was my first shift. I remember that. But we lost, like, I think 1-0 at home to St. Cloud. But that was an awesome atmosphere. But... And was that the same game, first game for you, Reggie? No, or? my first game was Boston University and BU, and I—I I mean, I don't didn't really have the puck on my stick a whole lot. I was kind of <laughs> chasing the game. I feel like, but uh, yeah, I just remember. I mean, it's such a historic building in BU, um, playing such a his, uh, team with so much history. So, kind of what I remember from that, and it was a really special experience for me. You guys swept that season that weekend, right? Or, or did no, you we split? Swept. You sp- we swept. Or yeah, we we swept them that we weekend. Yeah. BU, yeah, at BU. Yeah, at BU. Yep. Right. Yeah, it was a, I just remember that being a big a big deal. Like every, I think it turned a lot of heads. I think mm-hmm. you know when you yeah. talk about the beginning of of uh, that um, that run that you guys have been on. It kind of all started then a little bit, a little bit, right? And so yeah, exactly. Um, just to go through a couple quick stats here. So uh, Reggie is uh, 13th all time in points for Minnesota State in the Division One era with 111 points, including 49 goals. Uh, Jack has uh, 48 points, including seven goals in his uh, time here, and has been plus 95 when 178 blocked shots. So I did not write down how many blocked shots Reggie has, but I'm going to guess as it's... as much as that. <laughs> not, not close to as many as Jack has there. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty good. You have 178 bruises on your body because of that, or some of them are probably on your. Was stick. that updated from last weekend when you picked the one timer to the ribs? <laughs> no, that was. Oh, was that what happened, Jack? <laughs> can you talk had about a few more of that one? You were a little doubled over coming to the bench. I don't know if you missed a shift or not, but uh, yeah. you got back out there. But just wasn't really ready. Just got the wind knocked out of me a little bit, so I just had to gain my breath. But on those, I think I think Edwin Hookinson had more in one year than I have in my five. <laughs> so I, I do my best, I guess. So. <laughs> There's kind of an expectation, though, right, to, to get in front of pucks and, and at least in a, in a smart way where you don't hurt yourself? Yeah, for sure. It's been the, the culture since we first stepped on campus. For like, it doesn't matter your seniors through freshmen. Everybody, that's the expectation. And um, it's not always fun, but um, you want to win, so that's part of it. I mean, it's not Wyatt doing, you know, getting nine in a game or whatever it was, and more than there were saves, I think, by Dryden that <laughs> yeah, one game. But yeah. <laughs> um. So just talk a little bit about that that weekend last weekend. You're playing Bemidji. They're always a, a hard team to play. Um, and I I'm, it was actually kind of surprised that this would be probably, I think this is the first year um, in your uh, to, uh, in your tenure that you guys swept the series, the season series against them. I kind of went back and it, it's been a while since um, MSU has been able to take four games in a, in a season from, from your rivals and, uh, and, and doing it in pretty good fashion. But um, I know it wasn't easy. I know Saturday night, the first 10 minutes, uh, I think if, if Dryden McKay doesn't play the way he plays, uh, you guys might be chasing it a little bit against Bemidji, and you never get, like to get behind, behind against them. But, um, you, know, you know, what was that weekend like for you guys you, in, in terms of the way you played? Yeah, I thought you were spot on. I think both Friday and Saturday we were on our heels a little bit the first five, 10 minutes. Um, Dryden stood, stood tall on that for us, and then, we had some forwards make some big big time plays to get us a lead, and that's huge. I think um, for them, I thought. I mean, I'm sure they thought they were playing pretty well, and they're going to the locker room down two goals. Um, so I mean, hats off to Dryden. And then we had some forwards make some big plays, and then just kind of built. Um, I thought we got better as the the periods went on both games. So obviously a good good weekend for our group. 
Yeah, yeah. and anytime you play against Bemidji, you're going to get their best, and they play kind of a hard-nosed game with with some skill, and, you know, they play the game the right way, so it's going to be grind no matter what time you, uh, what time of the year you play them at. So I think that was kind of a good test for our team, getting ready for, you know, the playoffs or even I know we got to take this up week, coming weekend, but these next two weekends are kind of like playoff hockey and really gets us ready for uh, the home stretch here. So uh, as far as our team uh, play, I thought we, you know, like Jack said, kind of came a little slow, but kind of figured it out after the first 10 minutes there. You guys are going up to Michigan Tech this weekend. Um, always a, a fun place. Uh, Jack and I were talking a little bit about that before uh, we went live, and we can talk about that more in a second. But just in terms of what you guys are looking for this weekend, um, you know, you have the championship locked up. They're already locked into second place. Uh, I'm guessing pairwise numbers are always at the forefront and also just, you know, playing well and, and keeping your game going. What, what's kind of the big, uh, uh, you know, outlook for the weekend? Yeah, I think you kind of said the pairwise there. They're, they're, I think, at least top 10 or something like that, top 15. I think they're 12 right 12. now, Tech is. You guys are two. So, yeah, I mean, as far as pairwise goes, this is, uh, you know, a huge weekend for us, especially, especially in the road and kind of gearing up for playoffs, making sure we're getting the right habits at the end, just um, making sure we're playing the right way and, you know, just getting right for the playoffs. And I think Michigan Tech's a really good uh, kind of battle for us and, um, you know, just getting us prepared for the playoffs, so. Yeah, I agree. I think um, it's obviously a tough place to play. And obviously when you're this close, close to playoff hockey, um, it's going to be as close as you can get, I think, to that that atmosphere. So, um, yeah, just continuing to tighten up bolts and things like that and continuing to grow as a group. So we're um, firing on all cylinders coming playoff time. Yeah, I don't, I don't have the record in front of me, but uh, they've been very good this year. Um, I think Jack pointed out earlier that uh, they haven't had a regulation loss since since they played you in December is that is that right I mean their losses have been in overtime and I know they had to play two they've played a lot of overtime games this year and and including two last weekend so um you know which means they know how to play in in close games too yeah for sure I think I mean they're they're top players like we've got a lot of have had a lot of battles against those guys they got an older group that has a lot of experience as well so um I think two similar teams and that that um instance and their goaltender is very good too um have a lot of good defensemen their forwards are good so i got a great team um t- tell me a little bit about going up to houghton and what's that, what what that's like and i know for um i always say to people who haven't been to a lot of college games and get that college experience uh, i think from over the last 10 plus years that's been almost a go-to place i think uh if you can get up there when it's not snowing. <laughs> um, it, it, it's fun. The atmosphere is great. Uh, you know, I don't know where it ranks for you guys for home home barns to play in, but uh, or for road barns to play in, excuse me. Um, but, you know, where does it rank for you, and, and, you know, what do you think of it? Yeah, I mean, I think as far as our conference goes, that's one of the hardest places to play in. This, uh, for us on the road, I think that's a really tough place to go into. They have a huge student section. I mean, they have a kind of a huge fan base that make it really tough to play and it's loud in there but it's it's a it's a lot of fun every time you go there to play in front of those fans so it's better playing in front of fans and no fans at all so i mean you know they're they're gonna heckle you they're gonna you know try and say stuff to you but i mean it makes it even more fun to go out there and play in my, in my mind sure yeah it's a great atmosphere i think it's one of the best in our conference um it's a fun place to play at the band's playing almost the whole whole game and their fans are loud, so it's a uh, definitely up there for atmospheres and nothing in college hockey. So, what is your favorite place to play when you're not playing at home? Um, North Dakota, I think our sophomore year, that was a I mean the Ralph. That's a legendary building. and The atmosphere there was crazy. Um, yeah, and I'd say UMass the first weekend this year, the night they had the banner opening, like not having fans for over a year, um, coming out to warm ups and there's eight thousand people there booing you. So it was that was pretty cool too. I feel like every podcast I've done this season, someone mentions that UMass game. Every player I've talked to this year, it just seems like that was really made an impression on you guys. Yeah. I mean, even though it wasn't our home fans, I think it was still we were all excited just to play in front of people and yeah. kind of feed off the energy like Jack said. We're getting booed going on for warm ups and it was <laughs> not one person wasn't booing us. I mean I personally, I thought it was a whole lot of fun. I mean, even though you're getting booed, it's still you know, great to be back in front of fans and play in front of that many people. How about you? Do you have a favorite uh, road place to play? Uh, Jack said them both. Yeah. And the Ralph, our freshman year, was yeah. 
like you said, it's a, a legendary arena, so it's that was a whole lot of fun to play in front of all their fans and UMass on the road. The the banner night was something really special to get back in front of fans, like I said, and just play in front of people. And then when you see your own um, your own place, your own home rank, uh, how do you feel like that compares? I mean, certainly there's been big crowds. Your band, uh, I, I think that's one of the, mo- if I would say the most improved thing that I've seen in college hockey over 20 plus years of covering it is the Minnesota State Band, the, the Maverick Machine, and what they've done. I think they've modeled themselves after tech a little bit, and I think it's been great. But uh, what do you think of your 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 home place? That uh, I mean, like you said, the band is they bring a lot of energy and a lot of uh, you know kind of excitement for the rest of the people at the game and uh, playing in front of uh, you know five thousand people. It it makes us play better as a team. I think we kind of we f- we were able to feed off the the fans' energy and. Um, you know, hopefully we're able to give them a good, a good show every time we play in front of them, and we kind of take pride in that in our home ice. So uh, playing in front of our fans is second to none, I think. Yeah, I think it's a great building to watch a game in, and obviously it's there. the fans are a big reason why it's a hard place for other teams to come in and, and take a game from us. So, um, yeah, it's an awesome atmosphere. And all, like my, when my parents come to the games, like they always talk about how great of a place it is um, to watch a game, to see arena, and then – our fans and the band. Um, it's a special place to watch college. I think that's what college hockey is all about is is uh, our home home experience. Sure. So you guys have lived together since your freshman year. Is that right? You guys have been roommates? Were you paired up as freshmen or did you know or was it, did it come a little later? Or We were uh, sweet mates. So okay. it was, um, I was with Reese Molick and then Reggie and Jake were on the other side and then us four lived together for the next three years. So, okay. Yeah. Wow. A lot of time together. That's, That's a lot of time sure. together. <laughs> Five years is a lot of time together. <laughs> That's very true. Can you continue that next year? Is that something? <laughs> I think Jack's ready to get away from me. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> um, are, are you are you both are you both in taking grad classes right now? And and what uh, where are you at on on that? Uh, yeah. So I'm and, taking sport management, and then Jack is doing. I'm doing, uh, starting my MBA, so. Okay, yep. that's great. Jack's a little bit more stressed out than I am for kind of the classes. I'm doing a lot of a lot of book work and locking himself in his room, getting ready for tests. Yeah, it's a little, it's a step up from undergrad for sure. Like I only have, <laughs> what, one class right now, and then I'll have two in a couple of weeks, but everybody's like, oh, like, it's only one class, but it's like, it's, it's a step up from <laughs> what undergrad was, so, um, yeah, but it's good. That's good. Wow, yeah, I'm just working hard, so, so. Jack studies. I like how you you kind of, you know, gave the. Uh, he, it wasn't him saying how hard he had to work. You were actually saying what he does. So, mm-hmm. can you say the same thing about Reggie? Yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> he doesn't need much help. He's a smart guy. So maybe I'm, I just need a little bit more help with that stuff. Kind of a book wizard, you could say. <laughs> Spend a lot of my free time reading and stuff like that. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um. What do you guys like about this team this season? Um, to getting back to the the hockey side of things, what what's been? Uh, is there anything that's surprised you, impressed you? Um, I was asked recently about, you know, what's different about this team, or is there anything that's that hasn't been said about you guys that's already been said? And it just seems like it's such a deep team in all areas, and um, just different players doing it every night, but still having that top end. Um, you know, that top line, whether it's Nathan or Julian uh, running, you know, with 40 points plus. Uh, what what do you guys think of this team? I mean, I think any given night anybody can step up, uh, you know, and kind of make a game-breaking play. Um, also kind of what Jack was saying earlier, the selflessness, just anybody, it doesn't matter who you are. I mean, everybody's buying into doing the little things like blocking shots, uh, second and third efforts along the wall, and just kind of doing the, uh, the grimy work and, you know, just grind it and not just doing the pretty hockey kind of stuff. So I think everybody's just buying into the what our you know culture is and what's expected of us. Yeah, I think depth's a big strength for our team this year. Um, obviously, when you have a goaltender who is uh, who's like Dryden McKay, um, you get a chance to win every night, so that definitely helps. And like Reggie said, we've had different guys step up throughout the year, and um, yeah, I like our group a lot. We got a great locker room, um, guys willing to go uh, to work with each other and for each other. So, yeah, I like the group we got for sure. And uh, it, so it's you close out the regular season this weekend at Tech. Obviously, you try to keep keep things rolling, and and then you go into the league playoffs and 
the NCAA tournament. I'm sure the expectations are sky high right now. Yeah, I mean, um, I think we've done a good job just kind of focusing on the weekend ahead and ahead of us, and you know, just doing the best we can to make sure we're ready for that weekend. So eventually, at the end of the year, we're able to you know bring on our best hockey. So I think the kind of even going back to the last question, this team's done a good job every day, just taking a step forward and not taking a step back, just every day of practice, getting ready and you know preparing for kind of the the run at the end of the year and just taking small steps forward every day to make sure we're ready for the playoffs. Yeah, I think just taking it day by day. Um, um, yeah, we got a, a special group and just kind of the outside noise doesn't really matter a whole lot, but just focusing on uh, Michigan Tech this weekend and then building, hopefully building off that going into playoffs. So, One more thing I want to ask you about last weekend is, is, is having uh, Coach Hastings back. Um, I mean, I know Nathan Smith had to stay in China through the closing ceremonies and – um, I'm sure that was a great experience for him, and not everybody could get out of uh, China to be back um, with their teams. But uh, Hasty was back, and I don't know. Uh, I know Reggie was asked about that on on Friday night. It kind of surprised you guys that he was that that uh, he was there. Um, you know, what was it like to have him back for for uh, senior night, senior weekend? Um, as much as I'm sure you would have loved that they'd been playing for a medal, um, but to have him back and made sure that he, he got back once they were eliminated uh, for, for that weekend. Yeah, it was awesome having him back. I, like kind of like Reggie, what Reggie said, um, a little surprised uh, Friday before the game when I saw him, but it was obviously uh, good to have him on the bench for sure and uh, special to have him there for senior night. He's somebody who uh, we've both grow, grown with a lot and um, obviously a, a great coach and uh, a mentor for us, so somebody that we look up to and um, it's special that he was, was able to be there for senior night for us. Yeah, so like Jack said, he's kind of been a great mentor for us for the last five years. So for him to be able to come back and and do that and be there for that, it's uh, something really cool. And, you know, he's doing his best that he could to get back as soon as possible for us. And uh, anytime you got him behind the bench, you know, it, you know, it's kind of an advantage for us. So it was really nice to see him and be, have him be here this weekend for us. And it looks like you'll, you'll have Nathan back against Tech. And, uh, you know, if you're... I know there were a few dings, uh, guys dinged up last weekend, so hopefully you guys uh, get healthy here over the next couple of weeks as you as you get rolling. Yeah, that's the plan. Hopefully a um, couple bump, bumps and bruises, but we can get some everybody back uh, sooner rather than later. So it's good to have Nathan back, though. All right, well, best of luck this weekend against Michigan Tech and going forward into the playoffs. I appreciate you guys coming back on the podcast uh, together and talking about uh, being the, the old guys uh in college hockey right now you, you guys might be i'd be curious to know where you guys rank in terms of age in in college hockey if you guys are the oldest two players in in the game i'm not sure but it'd be hard to get older I'd probably <laughs> with, with, with all the rules and stuff it'd be yeah. hard but we'll see. Yeah. thanks for having us on though. Yeah, thanks for having us absolutely ready. uh well that's jack mcneely that's reggie lutz i'm shane frederick this has been the maverick Hi- hockey live podcast uh we'll see you next time